All right, we've left behind the minimalism. It's lovely to speak to you all today. This is a presentation that is about terminology and about opportunities, and I hope we can maybe embrace both of those aspects in the discussion. So to start with the opportunities, um, about two years ago, um, Pat and I, who knew each other from another long history, which you can ask about if you like, were given the chance to develop a mutual project to be based in my lab in Trinity College, Dublin. But Pat doesn't actually come from the digital humanities, and it was important to us to actually embed what we were doing in the digital humanities, but we weren't sure how. So we came upon the rhetoric of the critical digital humanities, and we thought maybe that would be a place for us. So the first terminology we want to talk about is this question of critical digital humanities. Reading our way through some of the things that fly under the flag of critical digital humanities, we sort of realized there was critical digital humanities, critical digital humanities, and maybe also a critical digital humanities. What do I mean by this? So first of all, we found quite a bit of, of uses of the digital humanities as a way of making, uh, or, or a way of bringing a more responsive cultural critique to the digital humanities, and that made it critical. And we found this in works such as Barry, and in particular in Applegate and Grimshaw, where you have these challenging of the current political scope of the digital humanities and thus its future institutional impact. But we also found this kind of critical digital humanities, where it was about more of a heightening of awareness of the constructedness of humanistic sources. Um, and we found this, for example, in Barry or in Dobson. And then we were also, however, intrigued by people such as Gary Hall, who was writing about how just as interesting as what computer science has to offer the humanities is the question of what the humanities, in both their digital and traditional guises, assuming they can be distinguished in this way, have to offer computer science. And beyond that, what the humanities themselves can bring to the understanding of computing and shaping of the digital. Now, that sounded to us also like perhaps a version of this critical digital humanities. So we were confused but intrigued. And we began to wonder if, in fact, one of the reasons why this terminology seemed to have had a moment and then ebbed somewhat could be because it was acting as what I would call a false boundary object. Now, just to remind you all of your Belker and Star, um, the idea of a boundary object is that it allows coordination without consensus uh, and allowing an actor's local understanding to be reframed in the context of a wider collective activity. In other words, words that allow us to, to tr transcend boundaries. But sometimes we see these false boundary objects that don't so much facilitate communication across communities as actively obscure diversity behind a veneer of consensus. So which of these was this critical digital humanities we were looking so hard to embrace? And furthermore, what we really wanted was a digital humanities that would allow us to address challenges like artificial intelligence in the way that Willard McCarty framed it in his 2021 Humanist Post. That is, with a combination of technical knowledge, a historical anima imagination, keen critical discernment, anthro anthropological scope, and a thorough education in the arts and humanities. We're nothing if not ambitious, hence the opportunities. And then when we got beyond, we thought, okay, well, maybe the critical digital humanities isn't the place to look. Maybe the digital humanities at all is not relevant to the questions we're asking. So we looked, of course, as well at things like human-computer interaction, which, again, we can go into this in the questions, has been critiqued for its narrowness. Um, we also looked at the Full Stack Feminism Project. Anybody here from Full Stack Feminism? If you missed their great panel earlier today, you are really should look up the project because, again, it is, is quite significant. Um, but we also looked at kind of indigenous approaches, like the care principles, the as, a, as opposed to the fair principles, and things like the Makurto platform, where there was this attempt to, to bring a different kind of sensibility to technological development. And then we thought, well, be where we are, which is at the intersection of digital humanities and feminist science and technology studies. And this was what we put forward in this Human Plus project, which is a Marie Curie uh, co-fund project funded by the European Commission based in the Trinity Long Room Hub and the ADAPT Center. And it allowed me to bring a uh, feminist science technology studies robotic practitioner into a digital humanities lab, which I'm sure exists in other places, but probably not the norm in a community that tends to be more defined around library studies, computer science, and the humanities coming together. So I'm going to turn over to Pat to tell you a little bit about feminist technology studies and how we found the borders between what we were doing. 
Thank you. So while uh, you might be familiar with um, digital humanities, you might not with, oh, sorry, <laughs> with feminist STS. So feminist science and technology studies is a heterogeneous field of multifaceted research. It has only begun to find resonance with AI research and only in the peripheries of the field. FSTS basically enables the researcher to combine the critical examination of relevant discourses with a re-specification of material practices. And further, the aim is to clear the ground in order to plant the seeds for other ways of configuring technology futures. This one, right, button? Yes. Thanks. <laughs> so what we did then, um, we wanted to map our collaboration through mapping practices and methods and mapping the overlaps and differences. And that is the result is, uh, that you can see here. The first three lines is um, similar mechani mechanisms, uh, mechanisms that we identified but that use different vocabulary. And the last four are a shared, what we call critical humanistic core that we have in common. So what did, uh, did we do from there? From there, we started to think about collaboration through thought experiments for two reasons. First, we want to integrate FSTS and into digital humanities as critical digital humanities and think about how this might work, working on the topics, objects, subjects that we worked on and how we could approach our projects differently through that. And second, we are still in the process of mapping, and therefore we raise, uh, we rather raise questions than answer them, of course. And uh, one topic that is, I can talk for hours about, <laughs> are robots, social robots, robots that are supposed to step into our everyday lives. And um, so the thought experiment, the first one, we asked the question of how can we move beyond the human-like in robotics, social robotics especially, and uh, as our collaborative practice unfolds, we start to ask questions about the human-like robot. We want to map the, uh, as a collaborative practice, the, we see in the collaborative practice an interventionist and disruptive and at the same time innovative potential and we are striving for a new robotic culture. Questions we raise, um, how do we give it a space in our imaginaries and daily lives that does not rely on existing relationship heuristics? Why do we assume robots should look and act like humans? How do we break down the biased heuristics of visual and cultural perception? And should robots have their own cultural repertoire of signs and symbols and even practices? we tentatively say yes. <laughs> so uh, now we move to thought, thought experiment two. So as you might guess, the first thought experiment was really very much exploring the space in which a digital humanist can start to ask questions in a feminist STS context. For our second thought experiment, and again, this is all um, very much work in progress. Um, we're still in the middle of the project, but we think it's really important to kind of converge around these kind of questions and of course to get a community validation around them. Um, so for the second one, we were thinking about embodiment. And this is something that I've worked a bit on. And the idea of DH practices, DH spaces, DH infrastructures, anyone who knows me knows that I'm a little obsessive about DH infrastructures, just the way Pat's a little obsessive about robots. <laughs> And one of the things that's always fascinated me about the digital humanities is that there is a real embodied sense of practice. Um, I did some interviews a few years ago, and every one of my interviewees talked about a certain kind of space where they worked, whether it was on the bus, or at the ironing board, or facing the table with the, desk, with the, the shelf of books behind them so they knew they were there. There was a real sensitivity to space, and yet there's relatively little, book, little work about the precise nature of the embodiment in digital humanities. Again, we think of ourselves as less than, sort of, you know, kind of engaging with the, the, the material. And one of the things that, that, that Pat has really delivered, actually, um, in the course of her Human Plus project so far, has been um, 
a uh, master's level course on uh, digital making, which had a much more complex title than that, which I can't remember right now. Um, and you see an image of the, the students working on that there, but also thinking about you know, the way people organize their spaces. There's quite a bit, I think, that we could do there. So we can think about, again, at this intersection between feminist STS and digital humanities, how the digital humanities has transformed our research in terms of places, spaces, physical practices, and how these physical circumstances guide the limits of possibility for interdisciplinarity. Um, how new technologies, whether it's AR, VR, XR, or something else, will emerge as objects of study, as workflow components, or needless distractions, and how, and of course there's a long history of experimental labs that have been brought out of the community and then either mainstreamed or, or closed down. So how do we see these sort of embodied practices becoming a part of what we do? What can contribution might the field make to larger debates? Again, it could be about research infrastructure, but it could also be about industrial concerns like the metaverse from this perspective of people who are very attuned to both humanities and technologies in the way they work. And finally, how a more embracing advocacy for new kinds of hybrid spaces that improve teaching, research, and outreach can be made. And that can be in terms of art science collaborations, critical making, or just improved psychosocial integration. And I think as we sort of stumble out of the, the sort of the COVID paradigm into something that is hybrid, I think everyone's been to a hybrid meeting that was really either just a face-to-face -face meeting or just a virtual meeting, pretending to be hybrid. There's a lot about the questions of how we live in our bodies and work from our bodies that I think can be answered here. And I think STS offers us, in particular STS offers us a lot of opportunity to address those. So just to conclude, and I really hope we can come back to these in the discussion, um, we really would say that the, the traditional triangle of, of computer science, library science, and humanities, obviously with all of its various permutations, could really benefit from a deeper engagement with STS, and in particular FSTS, as a way to enhance DH's potential as a disruptive political force with the potential to reshape fundamental aspects of academic practice, and, to, and also the commitment to move from reading and critiquing to building and making a very important part of what we find we share as well. These explorations can open up the potential for remaking disciplinary boundaries with a focus on assembling the tools and methods for scholarship on and under the recent digital conditions in its transformative potential. Thank you. <laughs>